hello and welcome to this edition of Vintage Vero with our very esteemed co-host Rick Wyckoff. Welcome. Good day, Martin. How are you? I tell you, we're, we're another week older since we were here last time. Yes, we are. It's always a lot of fun. A good part of my week, so I always look forward to it. it, it it's so great, and this just fell in my lap. Rick didn't know about this till I got here. A, a lady that I met, her name's Patricia Little, and she was a contributor to several magazines back in the 80s. So one of them, some of you may recognize, is the Indian River Life. And I'm not familiar with it. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, there's several of them out there these days, Martin. But uh, yeah, that was probably the predecessor. That was the first one, Indian River Life. And this had been, did you see a year on this? was 1980? 1981 was this issue. July 1981, cost $2. And it's got an awesome Excalibur car on the front, which is so weird because the cars actually came from a dealer that I looked at an Excalibur to buy in Fort Lauderdale. They are actually still there, or they're still a kind of dealer there, but it has... Fred Coin Chevrolet, look at that. Yeah. Ad for Fred Coin Chevrolet. Oh, yeah. And here, go topless with a uh, T-top Corvette. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Fred Coin, where were they? Fred Coin Chevrolet was uh, right at the corner on Miracle Mile on US-1. You know where the US-1 makes the big curve, yeah. curve at US-1? Now, not the one that towards the Miracle Mile end, but the one closer to the railroad tracks here. Oh, right, right, right. So, yeah, right there. A plumbing supply store right. or something there right now. That yeah, was yeah, yeah. originally Fred Coin Chevrolet. Then it moved down to South US 1 where uh, the Chevrolet dealership is now. Oh, isn't it? I never knew that. Yeah. See, some of this stuff actually happened before me. <laughs> uh, Castro Convertibles. I think they're still around, aren't they? Yeah, that was a South Florida company, furniture company, as I recall. Yeah, yeah they've got all kinds of North North Miami Beach, yeah. yeah, I've heard them. There is so much cool stuff, but we're looking at. I was flipping through this and looking at the cars. It's a car edition. And I was like, oh, I used to have one of those. Or, and look at this, the Chalet Suzanne. Yeah, that was in that Are they still there? Right. Uh, actually, I think they just recently closed. Probably in the last 12 months, the Chalet Suzanne over in Lake Wales in the right. middle of the state. Uh, a landmark for years and years and years. And I think I read somewhere where they finally closed. Oh no! That I was planning on going. <laughs> it was the, it was sixty the spot. years I didn't make it there. <laughs> um, no, seriously, everybody I knew had been there, and it, it even says how close they are to Disney, thirty miles from Disney. Yeah. Um, but and it's a hundred twenty per couple for an overnight stay and dinner. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know what it looks like. Uh, I remember going there as a child. I couldn't tell you. We went over to Cypress Gardens or something yeah. like that, you know, yeah. oh, uh, Six Gun Territory in Ocala, oh and Cypress gosh, yeah. Gardens. Oh goodness, there was another one. Uh, I'm thinking of a couple of the Carolinas, but there was another one in Central Florida. I can't remember. But anywho, we did stop there for dinner. I'm, I just vaguely remember it. Oh, I tell you, and I flipped through this, and there was a, an ad for Atlantic Bank. I realize y'all can't really see this, but for Atlantic Bank and Letter Nimoy is yeah. I guess their spokesperson. Yeah, that was the same year my dad designed an airplane for him and I got an autograph uh, from Leonard Moy. It said greetings from your friend Leonard yeah. Moy. And it was on a piece of paper and we put it in a nice little plastic thing and it's yeah. gone. I can't <laughs> find it anywhere. You gotta find it. It's somewhere. I, you gotta have Dr. Spot's autograph. I, I oh, he passed what two tore, months back. So, I, yeah. I tore by the spare room at my mom's that I'm looking for. But I did find some old hand-typed notes. My mom was responsible. She started hospice here in Indian River County. And she got, geez, back then, Sue Schlitt, and just kind of on the verge of the beginning of visiting nurses. And, right. You know, VNA, rather. Uh, and so she was the one that got everybody together and got hospice. And I found all those old handwritten notes and doctors that have, you know, long passed and 
people, and it was it was really interesting. But I didn't find my signature. You'll find it one day. It's around there somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's going to be even more vintage then. Um, but there's in there's there's pictures in here. There's nobody. I would. Right. Obviously, I can't see it without the glasses. No, no, no. But these uh, Vero Beach. There was uh, the, yeah. This is Vero. There was a um, a lot of them are um, from Palm Beach also, but. Uh, Charlie Sullivan is in there, a young Charlie young Sullivan, Charlie Sullivan. Uh, wow. senior playing tennis, and it, it was. There were a lot of names I recognized, but there were a lot that I didn't. So I thought you would, we would all get a kick out of. A, a, God, look at the styles. Look at the hats. <laughs> you know, yeah, hats. Like the golf hats are just like oh. It, it's just crazy, and this is part of the fun stuff. I have a customer that, a new customer came in yesterday, they just moved to the area, and I was telling them all about our show, Vintage Vero, and she goes, I would love to watch it because we're not from here, and I love knowing the history of where we live now, and I, that was a different interpretation from what I thought our listeners would enjoy. I didn't think we would have new people actually listening, you know, new residents listening. So uh, but, yeah, so yeah, we were we were talking about you know going back and Fred Coin Chevrolet, so that made something just pop in my mind. So who was the Chevrolet dealer in this town before Fred Coin Chevrolet, and where was it located? I don't even remember them. So okay, you're so back before I'm me. going back, right? So it was Roland Miller Chevrolet, yeah. and it was located. Uh, at 23rd Street and US 1, basically, so you know where like Adams Foreign Car Service is right now, the intersection, and there's a 7 Eleven there, the railroad tracks, the community oh, sure. center. Uh, so, yeah. just to the north of that, I don't even know what it is right now. That was where the car dealership was, Roland Miller Chevrolet. And I remember my dad always bought the Chevrolets, and we had neighbors who always bought the Ford, so yeah. we had a, like a we had, a, we had the first Corvair. Do you remember that car? Oh my God, yeah. Chevrolet's air cooled rear wheel Corvair. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I remember one time, this, this is, a, I digress for just a second quickly, but uh, we all know J.D. Graves, right? J.D. Yeah. Graves Hoover. So we've known her all our lives. And so one day, uh, they had a converted like beach buggy thing. That was a sure. Corvair that, that Hubert, their father, who recently passed, uh, had built for them. And so the girls called me and my buddy up, the, the Corvair won't start, can you guys, you know, I'm going to ask the guys to come over and figure it out, well, what did you guys do? Well, we put water in it, in other words, where the oil fills up in an air-cooled engine, they put their garden hose in there. Well, we saw Dad do that, he was filling a radiator up, a radiator up, excuse me, oh, yeah. and they put an oil in the crankcase, basically, uh, they put water in where the oil should go, and that kind of, uh, had to, the whole engine had to be rebuilt then, you know, dropped well, at least the you weren't going to put one. No, we didn't do it, thank goodness. <laughs> they had done it before we got I, there. I had one of my first cars I bought myself was a BMW. And I was on my way to Fort Pierce, pick up a friend, we are on our way to Fort Lauderdale, and it was overheating. So I made it to his house, and his dad came out, you know, a guy. So I trust him. I'm just a kid, like 17, 18, I don't know. And so the car's like really hot. So he sticks a garden hose in the radiator. And of course, I know now you shouldn't do it when it's hot. It's real hot. You and pull he's it off too quickly. Well, then all of a sudden you hear this whoop. <laughs> and then water and black stuff just shoots yeah. out the uh, yeah. uh, exhaust pipe. Yeah. And it cracked the block. Yeah. And uh, KB Motors, who just recently changed the name to K and something, yes. uh, were responsible for reboring the block because they didn't make them anymore. Yeah, so that's where Roland Miller Chevrolet was, just to the north of K and B. Ah, now you know where the intersection we are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. god. I remember going looking at the old Corvettes as kids on bicycles, we'd ride there. And mm -hmm. the old he'd always have one Corvette in the showroom, you know. We had to go check out the new Corvette. And this Very is nineteen sixty four, five, six, somewhere in there. And then Fred Coyne came to town and bought the Miller family out of that particular uh, Agency, as they call it back in yeah. those days, I think. You know? How cool. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And then my, my second one, um, Pat Little gave me, was this, it's an Apple II, uh, the review. And this is from, what did I say, 19, I need glasses now. Here, let me help you out. I, 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 I really just saw it somewhere. Um, 
it was 1980-something, 80 86, I think I said. But Dow was with uh, Ted Leonis, who I really didn't know anything about, but I just knew him from being around, and we'd go to some killer parties of his over at J.I. Fall oh, winter 1986, the Apple II. Yeah. Had yeah. we bought some Apple stock back then, huh, Martin? Yeah, I guess I didn't. I was like, <laughs> I didn't. I was one of these dinosaurs in that too. I remember hacking the old IBM uh, computers, ATs and XTs. Now this is about 1983. Okay, those are the first oh. ones I ever came across. And then Apple was kind of like this redheaded stepchild because IBM with the Microsoft um, software was like the king of it. This is the beginning of Steve of. Uh, Oh my goodness, of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. I can't think of the guy's name at the moment. But anywho, Apple was always a redheaded stepchild. You could have bought their stock for about fifteen bucks a share back then. Yeah, went down to about nine, and then of course you know where it is today, right? I, I, There's I, so many people who made fortunes on just yeah. that one stock. I was not one of them. I never bought a share, but you know, had you done if we all yeah. had the crystal ball, right? My mom's one of these like what gurus of stock picking, and I never listened to her. <laughs> she picked Apple. She picked about five others back in the early '80s. Told me to go buy them, and my broker talked me out of all of them. Uh, Pixar was one of them a little bit later on, Disney films and again Pixar. I didn't buy it. And of course, we know yeah. the history. So yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I never will not listen <laughs> to my mother's stock picks but again. No, I mean, back in those days, apples apples were just not the thing. Yeah. You know, now everybody's hooked to this thing, right? <laughs> the, I'm telling you, the iPhone, right? So, yeah, it, it's know. we live in an Apple world. We live in an Apple world. Right. My children are all Apple or Mac fans. They call it, right. you know. And Mac I, for Macintosh Apple, right? Yeah. And I may like my Android better, uh, but I'll tell you though, we do live in an Apple world. All the applications are in Apple. Every all my friends are in Apple, so I had to conform. Yeah. So, but that's crazy. You know, next week we're going to be talking about some vintage comic books that I have. I acquired from a very good friend of mine back from the early '60s. Uh, this is just a fraction. I Fifteen have, cents. I have hundreds of them, and Tarzan, Donald Duck, Star Trek. But uh, literally, I found them in her closet, still bound from the original wrapping in 1969. Two times they've ever been touched by human hands. Once was obviously somebody did to pack them. Second time was when we unpacked them, set them on the table, just barely opened the page to get the numbers out of it, catalog it, and put it in plastic. I, I got a great comic book story. So you, my family had originally Theater Drug on 14th Ave, right there at the Theater Plaza. Then they moved to uh, Rick's Pharmacy. And granddad, in those days, you know, you bought record albums and you bought comic books and magazines all at the drugstore. Right? Is this a cool story this to tell next week? Great week's? story. Well, do we have time? Book segment? But anyway, yeah, yeah, we're, we're the kids, so all the kids would run from elementary school and sit down on the stoop, and my grandpa would let them sit there and read. They never paid for anything, so oh, they'd yeah. read the latest comic book and put it back on the shelf for sale. And grandpa <laughs> didn't have the heart. To uh, oh. run them off, you know. You had a good. Let them, let them read the comic books, you know. It's, it's not going anywhere. Good guys running your family, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> he did well. Well, this is not quite the end of the segment, but we are going to shoot over to the flaming dessert part. We have a vintage cherries jubilee going to be made live on air. I'm not cooking. No need to worry. Uh, Bill Brown of the Patio Seafood Tavern is going to be showing us how to make. Cherries Ju Vintage Cherries Jubilee. So stay tuned, we're going to jump right over. We're making Cherries Jubilee today, Martin, with a little bit of a twist. Now, I got to tell everybody out there, he was going to make Bananas Foster like he did on Periscope. So follow Patio Seafood Tavern on Periscope. If That's you're right. Already. But I'm not a banana fan. How can fan. you not like bananas? Everybody loves bananas. It's the number one, it's the number one veg or fruit in the world. But I tell you, this makes me like that. This takes me back to the days when I worked at the 41 restaurant way back when I was a kid. I was in charge of doing all the flambe desserts. So I do Cherry Jubilee, Bananas Foster, and this is very exciting. I haven't had this in, I 
years. I mean, you missed the banana flossers yesterday, Mark, and it went off. I saw it on, I saw it on Periscope, though. Now, tell us a little bit. How so we have nice, beautiful Bing cherries that we're sauteing, and now we're going to add just, look. We get my parents right here. We moved everything around a little bit. We're going to have a little bit of this in here. Just get a little more flavor going here, but this isn't the highlight. Nice. And now, we're going to have just a touch of cream. Now, Bing cherries are yummy, but Bing cherries with chocolate, oh my gosh, to die for. So we're actually going to melt a little bit of chocolate in there. We're going to add some brown sugar now, and we're going to let that... Uh, this is way beyond what I used to do. <laughs> wow. So now, we got the chocolate melting, we got the Bing cherries in there, uh, we got... We got a little, up a little bit. So we have a little. That. We have a little bit of lemon rind in there, just to give it a little bit of a zip. Is that what this? That's was? what that was. A little bit of lemon rind. Now we're going to flambe it just one more time, but this time with a little bit of brandy. There we go. A lot of bit of brandy. There we go. A lot of bit of brandy. Beautiful. Now, let's see. We got everything. So now it's time to eat. What, there's cherries there? Yeah, we're not going to use those cherries. Oh. We're going to use the good big cherries. Use the good ones. Use the good stuff. So now we have these wonderful goblets here. And they're frozen. They're and frozen. They have ice cream in them. Yeah, beautiful ice cream in them. We're going to dip this in there, throw those big cherries in wait. there. Everyone knows I'm a dessert freak. And then we're just pouring this stuff in there with all those wonderful big cherries. And oh my gosh, it doesn't get any better than that. Bill, that was How's amazing. And it wasn't that long either, was it? Ha <laughs> ha. Well, we love you. Thank you so much. This is Cherry Jubilee at we're, the Patio Seafood Tavern. And usually and we're toasting over a cocktail, now it's dessert. Uh, this is much better. <laughs> Not better for my waistline, but you know. Uh, here it goes. That is the best dessert I have ever had. Check it out here. At, now, this available now or in the future? Well, we can do it now, but yeah. Um, this is hitting the airways. It's hitting the airways, so yeah. you know what? Come and get it. Now, I think the, everyone on Periscope there, hey, everybody. Um, this is the Vintage Vero show, and we are just doing the Vintage Vero Cherries Jubilee. Thank you so much. Thank My you pleasure. for tuning in. Check us out next week. Uh, we'll have maybe something else flaming in we'll, here. We'll burn something next week. Woohoo! Thank you very much, y'all. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you all soon. Cheers.